Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace, this is episode two in our series on music. We've talked about the history of music and where it came from. Now we're gonna talk about what happens when it goes into your brain box and you start bouncing it around in there. Music is made up of a combination of different characteristics. Pitch, rhythm, timbre, dynamics, and texture make up all music. Pitch is the one that people commonly associate with music. People who don't know anything about making it, but know a lot about consuming it, will usually pick up on the first two, pitch and rhythm. Pitch is what register, or key, the music is playing in. So think high or low notes. Pitches with a pattern of intervals between them, as pitches change, if they're all going in the same key, that would be a scale. Almost every song that you hear on the radio are played within a scale, and they're all mostly played within the scale of Western music. Eastern music has a different scale. They use different scales than we do, which is super interesting, but we're not going to get into that. Rhythm is the time element of music. Some people would call this the beat. A specific rhythm is a specific pattern in time. So think like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, if you're doing a waltz. We create a pattern, and that is the foundation of a song. Then, to add excitement, we might vary that pattern over time. We could change time signatures. We could change the beat. You might hit the back beat. You might hit the front beat. You can change how you want things to happen to add excitement. An interesting side note on rhythm, with the growing popularity of computer-generated music, uh, we've learned that you can't hit everything perfectly. If you just do one, two, three, four in perfect time, every time at the exact microsecond, it makes people uncomfortable. The subconscious brain realizes it's a computer-generated music, and it gets weird for us when we listen to it. So computer music producers purposefully introduce humanity by adding swing, which is showing up to the beat just a little late. Instead of being one, two, three, four, it's one, two, three, four. You just a little, just a little off to add some humanity to it. If you move that, we like it better because humans and music are pretty much as connected as one can get. This is also related to another major concept in jazz, and that's called playing in the pocket. It's the human flow that sort of changes the rhythm. Everybody speeds up, everybody slows down, everybody swings a little, everybody hits right on the certain beat. It gives music a special groove. It's the best. Now, on top of that are things like melody, which is a combination of both pitch and rhythm. It's characterized by its contour, so it's usually a rising and falling that happens together, and usually at a regular interval. The size of the interval in the melody is maybe the piano playing short, varied notes in succession, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little stars, you know, a song with a simple melody. Melodies are part of a song. It creates the pattern of the way the song is laid out. There's also timber which is the sound quality and the tonal color. You know, a song can sound kind of dirty. If you have a brass band, they can play a little out of key with each other, or they can add kind of growly sounds. Saxophones have a very, like a certain tonal color. The timbre is a characteristic that allows us to tell the difference between instruments. So a guitar can sound a lot of different ways, but mainly it sounds kind of metallic and plucky if you just play the guitar. Trumpets, on the other hand, sound kind of raspy, they kind of sound fat, you know, and putting all this together, you get the timbre, the sound quality, the tonal color of a song. Then you have the dynamics of a song. This is how loud or, or quiet a sound is. And notice I'm saying, you know, it's still my voice, but it sounds completely different when I speak loudly versus if I speak softly. A composition with both soft instruments and loud instruments has what's considered a wide dynamic range. Additionally, a horn that would maybe start soft and then get louder and louder and emerge over the rest of the instruments, that's a dynamic sound. If the sound is just loud with no lower dynamics, it's always the same. That sound is called compressed. Pop music has become more and more compressed over the years. It's not dynamic, but we'll get to that later. There's also, and lastly, but very importantly, texture. There's monophonic sound, there's polyphonic sound, there's homophonic sound and heterophonic sound. Basically, texture is how many voices each instrument has and how much they're bringing to the song. A huge orchestra is definitely polyphonic. So many different instruments playing the same melodies with different sounds and feels, textures all over the performance. This gives a very huge feel, a very deep sound. But a simple hip-hop beat 
might be monophonic or homophonic. It's simple. It's not layered. There's not a lot of instruments, maybe just a vocal beat and a beat from a drum or some synthesizer. And that's it. That's got texture, but it's different than an orchestra. You can also add texture in a variety of other ways, like I mentioned earlier, by playing your instruments differently, playing them in different ways, and using them with different equipment. Now with computers, you can add all sorts of different sounds and textures. The famous composer Arnold Schoenberg sums it up nicely. The joy for listening to music originates from the struggle between two opposing impulses, the demand for repetition of pleasant stimuli and the opposing desire for variety, for change, for a new stimulus. If you take all of these things and you put them together, you get music. Most people only listen to music and they probably don't even notice most of this stuff, which is why I'm gonna shout out to a video game, rock band, or guitar hero. If you're playing those games with your friends, someone's singing, someone's playing lead guitar, someone's playing backup, someone's playing drums, you get those things in the song, right? But if somebody screws up, it disappears. This trains you to listen to all of these different things, how loud something is, how quiet it is, whether it's on pitch, whether it's off pitch, whether it's in time, whether it's out of time, maybe it's swinging, maybe it's not. All of these different things come into play when playing the simple video game, which is actually not that simple. But it's a way to remind us that music is multi-layered and quite complicated. A study published in the Journal of Neuroscience found that when music is listened to by large groups of people, like all across these different listeners, their brains will synchronize together while listening to this music. It's, it's insane, actually, to watch. The midbrain and the thalamus in both hemispheres, which are the sensory perception centers of our brain, and the primary auditory and auditory association cortex light up. That shows that you're listening to the music and processing it. On top of that, the right lateralized structures in the frontal and parietal cortex light up. That's language processing. It's also sensory perception, navigation, spatial sensing, and it also processes things like pain. Most brain sections do a lot of different things. And of course, motor planning, regions of the brain that make you want to move. There are certain songs that you just can't keep still while listening to. Plus, the best part about music is that it releases dopamine, which is a reward chemical in the brain, makes you feel good, it reinforces you listening to more music and continuing to listen. Basically, we aren't simply just taking in the sound, processing it, and you know, storing it away somewhere. It's not background noise. This is a meaningful, long-term memory that's being created, and we're having an emotional response. It's activating all these different brain regions, and they're involved in planning, attention, memory, and of course, movement. According to one of the study authors, a postdoctoral researcher at Stanford University School of Medicine, Daniel Abrams, despite our idiosyncrasies in listening, the brain experiences music in a very consistent fashion across subjects. So if you take someone from anywhere, different culture, different language, different genetic makeup, we all have the same areas of our brain light up when we listen to music. It's universal. Does that mean, though, that there's like a perfect music? A music everybody would love in the whole world? Is Beyonce the best? I mean, yeah, she is. But is there a perfect song? Tomorrow we're going to talk about pop music. Let us know down in the comments if you think there's a perfect song and what that song is. Double points for Beyonce once. Either way, let us know. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus today. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes in this and all of our other series. You can also check us out over on iTunes if you just want to listen to this episode. We have the whole thing, all the series, squished together into one. You can find the link to that in the description as well. Thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. Come say hi on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for listening watching both.